So the classical dichotomy is this idea that you have to separate the nominal and real variables in your economy. And um, this was developed uh, by David Hume. And um, it's one of those ideas that we still believe is true in the long term. Um, in the short term, it's a little bit different. Um, but uh, the idea here is that if the central bank or in the United States, the Federal Reserve doubles the money supply, um, prices will just double. So this is based off the quantity theory of money, right? Double the money, while the quantity's uh, twice as much, which means uh, the prices have to be twice as high. So each dollar is then worth half as much. And um, so therefore, like the candy bar example, you know, something that was $1 now costs 2 so the dollar would only buy half a candy bar there. Um, one specific point of this is that when you change the money supply, none of the real variables are affected in terms of, you know, real GDP, unemployment rate, um, you know, the fact that, let's say, a Subway sub is six McChickens, you know, one of those things, you know, you print money, it should still be, Subway sub should still be six McChickens. So... Um, none of the real variables are affected in your economy. And this is a pretty powerful idea because this tells you that printing money in the long run uh, is not going to be any type of stimulus to your economy. Just one quick thing, too. If you go to a time period before the Great Depression, most economists believe that this theory was true. The classical dichotomy held both in the short term and in the long run. So at one time, this was just the main view of how money affected the overall economy. Um, and uh, it really re relies on prices being able to adjust. Uh, where this theory fell out of favor a little bit in the short run is in the uh, time period during the Great Depression, where prices weren't changing. They weren't uh, moving with the overall economic activity. So economists started to kind of go away from the classical dichotomy in the short term but all the assumptions that the classical economists made are true. It just, you just need time for prices to be able to change. So um, just a quick example on the classical dichotomy. It leads to this idea of money neutrality. Neutrality of money, you're a neutral in your car or something. You're not going to move. Uh, neutrality of money, no impact on any real variables like uh, we talked about already. So... Uh, doubling money supply would just cause all the uh, nominal prices to double the relative prices which are going to be set by forces of supply and demand you know double money supply forces of supply and demand didn't change at all those uh, relative prices will stay the same here's an example the pizza and cd example fifteen dollar cd ten dollar pizza so what does that tell you? You need one and a half pizzas per CD. So this over here is your relative price. Here's your nominal price. If you double money supply, this 1.5 pizzas per CD will still stay the same, but the nominal prices will just double. Think about that. This is set by forces of supply and demand. You double money supply, forces of supply and demand haven't changed, but anything measured in dollars will change. So here's the neutrality of money right now. You see that the price is doubled. Here's your nominal change, but the relative prices are uh, unaffected. Now, if there is a change in supply of pizzas or a change in demand for CDs, then that would change uh, the relative prices, but uh, printing of money does not change any of those relative prices. So the classical dichotomy leads to the neutrality of money, and it's really how you should look at the world in the long run uh, once you have enough time for prices to adjust, that there's no impact on any real variables in your economy by, by printing money.